The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Welcome once again to the West Ham Massive. Please don't forget to drop a like on this stream and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here. Don't get to get to hit the notification bell. And I'd also like to get your comments. I'd like to get your feedback on the topic that we're going to discuss today. So in the aftermath of the Crystal Palace match that took place, it was a Saturday, Sunday morning game over in the United States in Tampa, Florida. Now, I appreciate that it's a pre-season friendly, so I'm not going to get too bent up out of shape over the fact that we lost 3-1. But i got to say, and I mentioned it on the review, it's uh, there's, there's a few, few concerns that I think it's fair to say that myself and many other West Ham fans, besides some of you might be listening that agree with me on this, that the defensive frailties were there for all to see. And we obviously... We had a, a back, it was, it was listed as a back three, back five sort of defensive setup. It had Cresswell, was apparently the left side of a centre back trio of um, Cresswell, Mavropanos, and Kilman. Uh, whether he was or whether it was a, a back line of four, I, I don't really know. And to be honest, it's a bit of a bit of a moot point. But the fact of the matter is, is we had a back line that contained Aaron Cresswell, who has been a great servant to the club, but I think his race is run, quite frankly. Dinos Mavropanos, who is, I, I would say, for most Premier League teams, would probably be a squad player, if, if I'm being completely honest with you. I don't really see that he's he's actually sort of like real sort of outstanding Premier League quality. I don't think he's someone you could hang your hat on. Obviously, we've spent a lot of money on Max Kilman, and I think it's fairly safe to assume that he will go straight into the starting lineup. And I do think he will come good, but so far in, in the pre-season games, and especially that third goal that was scored by Odson Edouard against Palace, it, it has not exactly covered himself in glory as far as his opening sort of matches in Claret Blue is concerned. And then, obviously, Vladimir Kufal, who, I, again, I think similar to Cresswell, I, I think his time has come and gone. Fantastic acquisition, five million quid, and whatever happens, even from this point on, it's it's been five million quid well spent. But I, I think everything has its time and all things must pass. Now, so, I mean, I, I look at the, the, the back line, and I, I do appreciate that there's going to be some changes for the, the opening fixture against Villa. We will probably have Emerson slotting back in at left back and Cresswell will be put on the bench, I suspect. Hopefully we'll have a new right back in, whether it's wan whether it's Walker-Peters, whether it's Mizrawi, whether it's another, I, I don't know. I think the smart money's on a deal getting done for wan but we'll wait and see. But I think most people accept that we probably need another centre-back. Now, as I say, Mavropanos, decent, but not probably someone you'd want to rely on in a 38-game Premier League season. Zuma, with his peanut brittle knees that are getting progressively worse by the week. Aguirre, who I think is a very technically proficient footballer. I do 
wonder. He does he does seem to have the odd rick in him here and there. And I do wonder whether playing two left-sided centre-backs and having to get one of them to slightly move out of position is, is going to be something that's a good idea. But then again, having said that, we've had many situations where we've had two right-footed centre-halves and, and no one seems to complain about that. So whether that's actually a big deal or not. But I think that I think that it's probably going to be we need to get another centre-back, especially given the news yesterday that Kurt Zuma has... Uh, that there's talk that the club have asked him very nicely if he would like to maybe take an offer from Saudi or whether they can come to some sort of arrangement to pay up a portion of the remaining year of his contract at West Ham. So I think that we're going to be doing some business for a centre-back. Now, also aligned with this, slightly connected, I wonder, obviously we're getting a deal done with Borussia Dortmund for Nicholas Hawker, the German international. And I wonder whether this could slightly feed over into a deal for a centre-back. And I'll tell you for why. I stumbled across this story yesterday that free agent, former German international, former teammate of Nicholas Fulkrug at Borussia Dortmund, Mats Hummels, is possibly going to be someone that we're looking at. Now, I know that possibly some of you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit pie in the sky, but I'm not quite sure. You know, as I say, he is a free agent. He will be looking to continue his career, I believe. I think, yes, he's 35 years of age, so okay, he doesn't lower the age profile of the squad any. And we all know that it's it's pretty, it, that that's in need of bringing down, it's fair to say. But having said that, we're not going to get every player coming through the door at 23, 24 years of age, are we? That's not that's not the reality. And this is this is a player that's been been around the block, seen it, done it. He's got multiple Bundesliga titles. He's won the World Cup. He's got I think 78 German caps from memory, and played in Champions League finals. He's 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 been there, seen it, done it. Got the T-shirt. But I know there are going to be people that, that straight away look at his age and say that that is, that is completely ridiculous. But I'm not quite so sure it is. And there's a fairly recent example in the Premier League that we can look at to say that actually you can have a centre-back that comes into a team in their 30s, well into their 30s, and actually can give excellent service and excellent value for money. And that example I will give you is Thiago Silva, the Brazilian international who spent four seasons at Chelsea. He was about 35 when he went there as well. And in his first season in Chelsea Colours, he won the Champions League in 2020 when they beat Manchester City. Now, I'm not for one moment suggesting that if we sign a 35-year-old centre-back, that's automatically going to translate that we're going to win any sort of major silverware. Certainly won't be the Champions League, not even in it this season. But what I will say is that I do wonder whether the the experience, the know-how of a Mats Hummels alongside Max Kilman might actually be beneficial. Excellent player. You know, he's been he's been at Borussia Dortmund, he's had two spells there, he's had two spells at Bayern Munich. He actually started his career at Bayern Munich in point of fact, although he's more principally known for his time at Borussia Dortmund. But as I say, I think at 35 years of age, I don't necessarily think that that is going to be a reason to just look at him and completely dismiss it out of hand. Now, again, again, because he's a free transfer, then that means that we can obviously have some freedom, some scope to pay him a little bit more as far as wages are concerned because we're not having the outlay of a transfer fee. But I think that the possibility of extending his career at a Premier League club who have recently plied their trade in Europe and possibly look to do uh, make an assault on those positions in the oncoming season, possibly he might accept the challenge of that. Obviously, the allure of London as well, I'm sure has its appeal to Mats Hummels. But what do you think? Do you think that this could be something that 
we would want to explore. And like I say, I do wonder whether the fact that we're negotiating with Borussia Dortmund over Nicholas Falkrug, and I appreciate that Mats Hummels is no longer a Borussia Dortmund player. I understand that. But I'm sure that he has, there's connections between the two somewhere along the line and maybe there can be messages passed back and forth you know how these things work and there are conversations had behind closed doors and as I say not just the fact that they're Borussia Dortmund former teammates they're also teammates in the German national team over the years so I just wonder whether maybe the fact that we're bringing in a a German international teammate a, a recent club teammate in, in the shape of Nicholas Fulkrug, whether that actually might make it easier to have those conversations with the recently departed from Borussia Dortmund, Mats Hummels. Like I say, 35 years of age, I don't think that that is a block on it. You know, you could, you could do what Chelsea did with Thiago Silva when they signed him, as I say, four seasons ago. They brought him in, 35 years of age. They brought him in on a one-year contract with an option to extend it for a further year. And they kept extending it until, obviously, at the end of last season, it was announced that he was going on to pastures new. But they got four years of service out of him. And if you talk to any Chelsea fan about the service that Thiago Silva gave, they will all speak in glowing terms. So I don't necessarily think that his his birth certificate should be a reason for West Ham to dismiss this one out of hand. But as I say, what do you think? Mats Hummels, if he could realistically be brought in, if the financials could work, if he wanted to put pen to paper and come to the London Stadium and represent our great club, West Ham United, would you be happy with that? Do you think that that would, number one, primarily, do you think that that would be a a move that financially we could look to entertain? Do you think it's something that Matt Hummels would be agreeable to? Do you think it's something that would improve our back line that is really the main question does he improve our lot does he make our back line instantly stronger by coming in alongside max kilman let me know your thoughts you've got the comment section below and as i say guys please don't forget to drop a like on the stream subscribe to the youtube channel if you are new around here we have just broken 700 subscribers yesterday as i record this that's an absolutely fantastic milestone since we obviously started making content again a couple of weeks ago we've gone from 499 to over 700 subscribers and i do thank you all for that please tell your friends that we're here and um we're going to hope to sort of like push on towards the 800 subscribers mark and who knows where we're going to end up before we're very much older thanks again like i say don't forget to drop a like on the stream subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell notification and we'll see you again soon take care come on you irons the west ham massive are pleased to support iron supporting food banks They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in the stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons.